Hello and welcome everyone. This is a wonderful day and I have the pleasure of welcoming Dr. Tamagna Ghosh who has done exceedingly well in the recent 2018 NEET PG exam. He has scored a score of 815. That is phenomenal. Dr. Tamagna comes from Dams Kolkata branch. He's been our student with a one year regular course. We are very happy to have you here at the DAM Center, Dr. Tamagna. Please share your feelings with us. Thank you so much. Um, it feels like coming back to family, actually. Um, you know, like, the experience has been wonderful. Uh, all these uh, amazing, amazing teachers who have uh, come all the way to Calcutta to teach us and then coming back all the way to Delhi to meet them and then thank them personally has been a wonderful experience. Believe me, Dr. Tamagna, the pleasure is all ours. It's a great feeling to sit and chat with toppers on their performance. Now, you have, I have already mentioned and also you have mentioned that it was good time that you had at the dance classroom. Yes. Can you just elaborate your experience with that? How, how it benefited you and how was the entire thing at Dams Kolkata? I think the important thing about uh, classroom coaching is that um, see if you are studying from a study material or if you are watching videos, you don't get that one-to-one -one interaction. And there's also a lot more that goes between the lines. So it's not when you're studying say psychiatry or pharmacology, it's not just that that you're studying or preparing for. You're also preparing for an exam. And so the mindset of the exam, how to approach this exam, all these comes actually in between these lessons. And uh, that is the importance of uh, actually uh, being there physically present in a classroom and listening to a teacher and uh, receiving that advice directly. That is the importance of that. I think and that has helped me a lot. I think you have received the advice better than anybody. You have got a wonderful score of 815 in a tough exam like NEET PG 2018. Uh, can you put some more light on your interaction with the faculty that go to Calcutta, you know, every now and then and take classes? I think, um, see, when a faculty comes in, there are uh, three or four different ways in which you can interact. So first you have the normal lesson and then in between, if you have any particular doubts, then you can always approach them. They're very approachable, very nice. So I used to ask some questions. Um, I was very afraid of actually um, standing up in front of the crowd and uh, they were actually... Um, they were very uh, understanding in the sense that I would go in between the breaks when nobody would be looking and I would ask them these um, doubts so that I would not feel awkward and they were very nice and they would always reply. And also, and, and I'll keep stressing this, is um, the things that you learn even without trying to learn them. So when you have gone to attend this class, you will not go there to get these advice, but these are the pieces of advice that will actually um, lead you all the way. So when you're sitting there in front of the computer, you may not remember the facts, but you'll remember that, that gut feeling which will actually help you in um, attempting these um, MCQs and approaching this exam as a, in a wholesome way, actually. That's very nicely said, and I totally agree to whatever you have said, that uh, interacting with the teachers is adds on to your knowledge and consolidates yourself as a person as well. Uh, as we all know, and you know, a very important part of our curriculum is the tests. You know, we are referring to the class tests and also to the subject-wise tests that we give to the students, and along with the grand test, which is a monthly thing. Uh, what is your call on on the tests that are conducted at Dams? Uh, actually, most I have observed that many of my friends too. Actually, uh, they tend to postpone these te tests towards the end of the. Um, the curriculum. So they want to be very, very well prepared. Once they're uh, very much happy with their preparation, that's when they want to attempt the exam. But I had the opposite problem. I did not want to read, but I wanted to give the exam. And uh, okay, maybe you shouldn't approach it in this extreme way, but that's a very important thing to do. So when you're giving these exams, approach it as a student of life. So you cannot expect all these questions to come from your limited study area. But what you learn is actually you learn how to attempt a question from the questions merit itself. So by giving, by not waiting for the completion of the syllabus, but rather attempting, th attempting these questions in a wholesome manner, you will actually be able to solve the MCQ on its own merit. So you'll learn how to uh, establish the language of an MCQ. Many times you'll get these red headings or these hints or clues which are hidden in the question itself. So you learn to appreciate them. Just because you feel that you do not have the knowledge does not mean that you do not have the knowledge. You have been a student of MBBS for five years. You have been studying. You know some subjects. You may not know the other subjects. But you should always solve questions. Because this will also give you, uh, like when you're revising the material, it will give you a focus as well. So you know what you know and you more importantly know what you do not know. 
So, so what I can gather is you have converted the weapon into a tool. Everybody is afraid of the weapon called test and you have used it as a tool to your credit. Wonderful that is, how intelligent that is, I should commend you on that. You know, as a recent trend, Dam says has come up you know, uh, with a video for the GTs, that is the grand test. Mm -hmm. What is your take? How useful? How good these videos are? So what I want to see is, um, you'll always get an explanation in the PDF format once you've finished the test. But the fact is, uh, sometimes that explanation needs to be done in a more uh, sort of human manner, where you need a little more explanation, some drawing, some, some you know, um, pieces of information which will just bind it together. So that is what you get from the videos. So when you feel that you, even if you have answered something correctly, but you do not know why you have answered it, it happens many a times in MCQ. So you have been able to rule out some options and then you get the right answer. But that is not the ending point. The ending point is you should know why and you should be able to um, attempt that question and other questions which are related to it. So that is what you get from um, watching these videos. Because not only do you get the answer, but you also get uh, surrounding information and similar type of MCQs can be solved using this. So that is very, very important rather than just reading and reading it o over and over again. That's very rightly said. And uh, uh, before the interview, we were talking about the dam's notes. Uh, can you just put some light on that as well? I um, maybe s maybe some people from Calcutta will remember me because I was the person who used to. Uh, I would hear jokes from the back, like people sitting behind me, and they would say, "You know, this guy he writes so small; he's probably writing a whole chapter on one page." Mm -hmm. So I had this diary, and this diary is like the annual diary, right? Three sixty-five pages, and I have managed to fit the whole of dams in this one diary. And the thing is, uh, you. This is what I want to like tell you guys that you should know about yourself. Okay. So my biggest problem was that I used to be really afraid of large amounts of syllabus. So if I have 19 different notebooks, pages filled with information, how do I revise that in a week before the exam? So I wanted to tell myself I can fit this in a small manner and then I can go on to say, you know what, it's just one diary. I am very sure it is very, very humanly possible to know this much. So 365 pages, even though I know that it's the same information which would be in 19 notebooks, but that is how I used to convince myself, you know, this is possible. So know what your weak points are. You have been able to observe yourself. This is not the first time you're studying and then accordingly change your behavior. See the, the line between, um, if I may quote, uh, the line between, you know, in Sanity and genius is very, very fine. So when you're successful, people call you a genius. If you're not successful, they might call you insane. But the fact is, you got to do what you have to do for yourself. And for me, I knew that this was my weak point. And so, you know, I would write really small, try to fit it all in. And then I could tell myself, you know, if I have the capability to fit all this into a one diary, I can definitely have the capability to fit that in my brain. So that is how I convinced myself how to. And um, another thing that I want to say is, uh, towards the end of my preparation, it actually happened to me that I was overburdened. I didn't know what to do. You know, you have a lot of dams, um, text material. You have a lot of um, videos which you want to go through. You have solved some tests and you have the answers for that. And sometimes it becomes very, very uh, haphazard. So where do you come down to? Your notes are supposed to be your anchor, okay? So everything should depend on your notes. And that is the fact that you want to keep on revising. And so anything else that you want to add on to is your extra. This is what you're putting in. Uh, more than the average person, right? But you should always keep your foundation correct. And that foundation, and I chose that foundation, you know, was notes. So I wanted to say, you know what, If I, even if I can't solve tests or can't revise all these answers or anything, one thing I definitely want to do is I want to learn my notes, you know, like, like the back of my hand. And I want to go to the exam at least knowing this. This is how much I want to bite and this is how much I want to digest. So that is my capability and I want to do it very, very well. And that is what the importance of notes is. Okay, So you should not forget that. I but, think. I, but I think you have bitten well and digested <laughs> too well. You have scored a score of 815, which is going to be a dream figure for many of the aspirants. And let me remind my viewers here, I am talking to Dr. Tamagna Ghosh from Dams, Kolkata, a wonderful person to talk with. Uh, Dr. Tamagna, I'll just ask you, you know, uh, about your concern or about your opinion uh, about the DP, DVT that we conduct. DVT, um, some people tend to misunderstand DVT actually. I saw a lot of people not attending the classroom or anything and then directly jumping to DVT and expecting bigger returns. But DVT, the point of DVT which I felt is giving the high yield points. Okay, so DVT is something that really helped me sort of bind everything together. So when I have 365 pages of notes, I want to know what are those few things in the last, say, two days. What is that that I want to revise? What, what are the hard-hitting points? What are the things that 
you know all our like wonderful teachers have analyzed and uh, according to the trends they want to say that you know these are the high hitting points right high yield points so that is what dvt is so you can't use it as core text core text becomes your notes but your highlights or the things that you want to pick out from those notes and revise over and over again becomes your dvt and also the very important thing about dvt is the visuals okay so neat has slowly uh, transformed itself towards more of usml okay integrated questions more of images more of probably in the next uh, neat you might even have audios and videos and what not right so you, your mind should be prepared for that and that is what uh, dvt does so you have these wonderful uh, visual sort of um, visual cues okay you are not um, just answering from the image but you are also learning the text behind the image so you have these small uh, highlighting points from your notes so you know okay this is how a fibroid looks like they might give me a picture of fibroid and then you can have associated questions along with it which can be twisted and asked that is the that is the wonderful thing about dvt well, th that's the whole idea actually to give you a complete picture of the exam so that the, our students the demsonians they are never left behind and they are capable enough to f uh, face any challenge. Let me ask about the CBT-1 and CBT-2. And for the information uh, to our viewers, DAMS has conducted uh, this year two CBTs, uh, by the name of CBT-1 and CBT-2. I would like to know that how these two CBTs helped you and what were your individual scores in these two? Um, what I want to say is, uh, if I, I think it will be there that some of the students in DAMS you know, or in colleges, they will be interested in drama. So when you're practicing for a, for a drama, you'll actually have some, some rough rehearsals in which people first practice their own dialogues, then they do it with each other, and then you have these dress rehearsals. Dress rehearsals is with the lights and the sounds and the stage and everything, right? So your CBT is exactly like that. So when you're giving a neat exam, you're not just checking your knowledge. You're also surviving on stress. You're trying to beat that. You want to do really, really well, even though you're stressed. You have to reach a destination. You have to wake up early in the morning. You have to get into that mindset. You know, I have to give a test and I want to remember everything that I have studied. So all of these things can be practiced in a CBT. So you have to go to an unknown location, which you do not know, might be a little uncomfortable, might not know other people. And then you have to find your own seat, give the exam, come back. So that um, sort of puts you into the mindset. So when you're giving the actual exam, then it becomes uh, a sort of a second life. So you know, you know that this is what will happen. So it won't be an excess amount of stress. It will be your daily routine. That is what you want to develop from a CBT. That is how it's different from sitting in the comfort of your own room and then giving it online. Uh, rather than, you know, going to a location, having that stress, finding out. Sometimes you might ha I used to have problems in finding out where the location of the, the exam center was. That also adds to your performance. Because these are the tiny things that you do not think of, but actually can uh, pretty much change the ranking that you can get. So these are the things that you get used to in CBT. And that is the whole idea of doing it. So that uh, we enable our students to take care of the stress before the actual stress comes. Very well said. Uh, and uh, let me just remind uh, my viewers, I'm talking to Dr. Tamak Nagosh, who has secured a score of 815 in 2018 NEET PG exam. Dr. Tamak, we are really eager to know what was your actual experience in the NEET PG exam? Um, what I want to say is, uh, it's diverting a little off topic, but I want to say is um, when you think of success, think of it in a more kinder manner. So you have to accept your vulnerabilities. I know that even if I prepare the best in the country, if I can't perform, I will not get that rank. Right. So when you accept that vulnerability, you know, there are all of these, you know, stress factors and luck factors and everything else, then you can go and be a very genuine person in the exam. So I approached it like that. I know that I was successful before entering the exam. And this is what I want to tell my friends as well, that when you approach an exam, you should be successful even before the ranks or the results come out, because you know that whatever you set out to do you have done and then when you go into this exam hall and it's exactly like cbt you've you've reached this center and you're you're sitting in that computer you're not used to it you might be a little stressed out but you know that okay you know what this phase will you'll be able to calm yourself down you'll be able to meditate focus your attention on it and then it will just come as a second nature so even if you have practiced a lot initially you might have a little faltering but you have to get into that zone that is what sports people call getting into the zone so when you have an olympic champion and you will see that you know they're they're actually actually revising running the race or you know skiing that thing so you have to practice that you have to imagine yourself being in that hot seat looking at the computer and just solving it and it should be a very peaceful like nothing around you should be able to affect you because you'll be in that meditative zone that is called being in the zone and that is exactly how 
thankfully um, due to god's grace i was able to do and uh, again cbt sort of helped me do that because that is how you'll like you'll be able to get into that um, state of uh, being really really you know centered and focused well i think you were really focused nicely and uh, b- getting a score of 815 in the most tough exam like neat pg 2018 is simply incredible and before we wind up this conversation any message to your juniors you would like to say um all i want to say is um again i want to repeat that uh, just uh, your your uh, definition of success is very very important so what you define as success will actually set your mindset so if you decide to be successful even before the exam that will put you in a good state see it does not matter what you get or what you receive because there are a lot of other factors you are vulnerable it's not only your hard work but if you are successful before entering the exam hall that is when you know that okay you know what i'm giving it my all and then you know let it come let what may come what fate will give me and you'll be able to um, sort of approach this exam in a very um well rounded manner and uh, the stress will not get to you because you're not stressed out about what you're receiving you're stressed out about what you're giving and how well you're giving it and definitely i think you would recommend your juniors to join dams definitely definitely so and uh, always make notes the way you want to and uh, revise it the way you want to don't listen to other people is what i want to say well dr tamagna believe me i don't want this conversation to end it's very nice and all very informative for all of us here but then time is the biggest constraint for all of all of us thank you very much and we were talking to dr tamag nagosh who has secured a score of 815 in 2018 neat pg exam we wish you all the best thank you so much thank you